Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Lit Life Podcast, where I encourage you to live your life autonomously. This is your girl, Autumn the Aries, and the first, very first thing that I need to say to you guys is Happy New Year! (laughs) I hope that you guys brought the new year in however your heart desired. So if you went out and had a good time, great. If you stayed in, um, if you went to friends and families homes, if you just like woke up and the ball had already dropped, whatever, we made it, right? I know for so many people that I've talked to, um, 2019 was really rough. I, I can't really say that 2019 was like super horrible for me. As a matter of fact, I feel like it was really good to me. I feel like 2019 was good to me. Um, And and I just feel like going into 2020, I I think that I'm just carrying that momentum with me and, and things are going to be bigger, better and brighter. Right. But um, I do want to (laughs) touch on a few things. So you guys know, I've been, uh, I've been off of my podcasting for a couple of weeks because I took a break, right? This is now season two. I decided to, you know, break things up into seasons. I really do believe that with anything, like you need a break, right? So I decided to break up into seasons. I think I've been gone, what, two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that. It seems like it's been way longer than that. And you know what, it probably has, but as... I say all the time I am trying to be a little bit more consistent and trying to make sure that I bring you guys content uh, weekly and I am going to continue with that. But anyways, 2019, um, I don't even know if I want to go into a whole lot that happened. I don't really think a whole, whole lot happened. I mean, I started my podcast uh, that was in like April or May. I'm going to have to get on that because I know I'm going to have to do like something sweet for my one year anniversary, right? So I'll figure out what exactly what the date was and, and have to plan something out for that, something special for it. So, But that's been a good thing. I've met so many great people. Um, actually was featured, well, I, I guess they all kind of played in 2020 already, but um, I was featured on all tales podcast i was featured on who else um this was just recently all tales um i i just came back from a visit with drunk unks radio y'all know how much i love the drunk unks like shout out to drunk unks and question everything podcast for having me in the studio and showing me so much love like I have so much love for you guys and I appreciate you and when I am in the area I will be sure to stop by again like here I am I'm just inviting myself so I feel like we family now I just show up like hey cousin uh also was just on the podcast brothers uh podcast and that was a lot of fun uh it was very good meeting uh Law and Fresco, I probably messed that up, but I think it is Fresco. I think that is what it is. Either way it goes. <laughs> it was good chilling with you guys um, and, and you too. Like if I'm in the area, I'm coming back. I'm just knock on the door like what would it do? Um, But in the past, like, well, prior to all of this, I was on Shenanigans with friends podcast i was on um raw and uncut and actually i need to we have a follow-up episode that we should have done like months ago but y'all know me i'll be playing around i'll be wishy-washy sometimes but you know and i i don't have a problem admitting that it just kind of is what it is but i'm gonna get back to him so that we can get back to our topics uh that we discussed and that we uh table for the next episode So, what else happened? Let me tell y'all what happened uh, real quick with Delta Airlines. So, I know if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already know I had a whole fit because 
I was on my way. What was I going to? I was on my way home from New Orleans. Like me and um, one of my best friends, we went to New Orleans for a weekend, just kind of spur the moment type of deal. Had a great time, even though it was kind of chilly and kind of cold. Um, we still ended up having like a fantastic time. And I do plan on talking about my trip to New Orleans when I have um, Sidelic Sunflower back on the show. Uh, hopefully we'll be recording with her in the next week or two. But anyways, I'm on my way back from New Orleans and I had a, a later flight out. I get on the plane, I have a seat, Um, it it was already delayed like 30 minutes, but you know, 30 minutes, that's no big deal. So they're telling us like, okay, you guys need to, we need to make sure that you board the plane very quick because if we take too long, we're not going to be, we're going to have to cancel the flight. And I think it had to do with, um, you know, like the flight crew, you know how the flight, flight crew has a certain amount of time that they can be in the air I think that they had come to the end of their time and being that they were delayed you know so much it kind of went into their time so anyways get on the we heard everybody hurry up and get on the plane the flight attendants got on the speaker and was like thanks you guys for you know getting on here quickly we're gonna go ahead and get you out you know you're only being in the air about an hour and six minutes blase slay we are the the plane is backing up and you hear this thump and i'm like did they hit somebody like did the plane run somebody over what? i don't know what just happened like everybody on the plane was like oh shit what happened <laughs> well there was this wall to the right of the plane And it's called a blast wall, from what I understand. And the wing of the plane hit the blast wall. And now, mind you, it's dark, really, really dark outside. Uh, But what I do know is somebody is supposed to be, like, watching that stuff, right? I mean, at least that's what I would think. That's what I would guess. Somebody's supposed to be over there. You know, don't they have them little, them, like, flashing light things that they hold or whatever to direct the plane you know I don't know what they are but like they look like batons or whatever I don't know um so here come like three people they're they're going over to the wing of the plane and looking at trying to inspect it and I'm thinking to myself like I don't even see nobody with a flashlight you know what I'm saying I'm like well I already know this plane ain't going nowhere right (laughs) So, of course, they pull back up to the thing. They're like, everybody got to get off. This plane is not going out. You know, it has to be inspected. And I was cool with that. I was 100% okay because of the simple fact that um, I, you know, better safe than sorry. But what's the recourse, right? What What's what's the deal? What are we going to do? Now, I, uh, even though I was okay with it, I was irritated I was irritated because of course I'm ready to go home like I didn't been out all weekend you know kicking it partying and I had the day off the next day from work because I knew I was gonna need to relax and I knew that I had things to do so you know I'm just like okay what's next are they gonna get us on another plane what are they gonna do well first they said they was gonna get us on another plane but they didn't say that it was uh, guaranteed so basically they're like look we're gonna put you in a hotel they said a four star we'll put you in a four star hotel um and we'll get you out tomorrow you know go ahead and b- rebook so that's what I did and I wasn't really feeling well so I'm like I'm not gonna sit in this airport and wait for them to say okay this next flight is also canceled that was supposed to come in at midnight by the way so I would have been sitting there in the airport an extra like four hours and I already knew that the plane was you know I already knew it wasn't gonna come out and I don't think it did because I saw a couple of people that were trying to stay for that second flight I saw them the next day in the airport but anyway they gave us some food vouchers for the airport and um 
was like, yeah, we're going to put you in this four-star hotel. Well, I just want to let y'all know, I'm not going to put the name of the hotel on blast. I just want to let y'all know that it's not a four-star hotel. So that was the first lie. Now, I am not a hotel snob. Like, I was comfortable, like, where I was. I was comfortable in the hotel. I'm just saying, don't say that it's a a four-star hotel when it's not, like, I, what what four stars are you looking at? Like it, what what website? You know what I'm saying? No, that's it. Just wasn't. But anyway, they also said that everything would be paid for. Um, my flight wasn't until two thirty. The next day, they said that I would be able to do a late checkout and they would pay for it. Um, you know, if I need, I, I couldn't charge any. But that was a lie. Like the the people was like, "No, nah, you're gonna have to pay fifty dollars for a late late checkout." I was like, "Well, what?" No, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and check out. Um, couldn't couldn't get any food because the food vouchers. Nobody in the airport took the food vouchers, and I don't know if it's because this airport was like this airport is still fairly new. Uh, but the three restaurants that I tried in the airport that well, I tried one that night, and then the next day, I tried a couple. None of them took the food vouchers so there you go I'm already spending like arm and a leg on food let me hurry up and get to the the bottom of this story basically they offered me like some miles like 5,000 miles and 50 dollars credit travel vouchers I went off I called I didn't tweet at everybody I didn't call corporate I didn't uh, sent sent the email uh, through you know through their website or whatever because you are a I don't know how many billion dollars type of a company and because of your negligence like this wasn't this didn't have to do with weather this didn't have to do with you know some circumstance that couldn't have been avoided like your people did this. Your people did this. There was nobody watching. You know, this was your crew that did this. So uh, however many people was on this plane really deserved a whole lot more than $50. I don't give a damn what y'all gave everybody else. I know I deserved more than $50. So after I finished raising hell, I ended up um, with some miles and, and a decent credit. Like, I'll be able to purchase my flight for Smoke Free Weekend in Vegas, April 16th through the 20th. So, I'm okay now. But I just had to let y'all know about that. Like, that shit was crazy. I'm like, are we really doing this, Delta? Like, do we really have to do this? But to be fair, after I, you know, did all of my whining and complaining, uh, they did get me straight. And, and Delta is good for that. Like, I had an issue before, and they straightened me out. So, you know, kudos to Delta for finally listening. It, what, it, what it really is is you have to make sure that you're talking to the right people. Like, you have to call back. <laughs> you have to send that email and follow up on that email. Like, you have to do those things because if you don't, you're just going to get that $50 credit. So, that's that on that. Um... Do I have a, I don't know if I have a shut the fuck up award today. Um, I don't think I do. Maybe I will at, towards the end. Uh, so anyways, again, happy new year. Uh, I am finally going to talk about me being a nudist or a do they call it like a, a nature naturalist or something it's the proper word I can't remember um so <laughs> what I did initially when I was trying to develop this topic was I went out to the internet to do some research because you know anybody can be self-proclaimed anything and I wanted to make sure that me saying that I was a nudist I, I, I was making sure that I was saying the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I was making sure that the definition was in tune with me and me wanting to be 
wanting to have the least amount of clothes on at all times. And it did. But some, uh, you know, I came across a few articles and I felt like they were really good articles. But I started reading them and I was like, you know what, I'm not reading all of this. I'm going to just go ahead and <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead and um and 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 define what it means to me and how I feel like I I may or may not fit in like a nudist society, I guess you could say. So, as far back as I can remember, I always like I just it's not that I hate clothing. Let me let me start there. It's not that I hate having clothes on. I am just a lot more comfortable without any on or without with the least amount of clothing on. Like I, I you know, some things that I wear like all the time, like socks, except for when I get in the bed. Like if I'm oh, if I'm at home and I don't have anything else on, I'll have on socks. And that's just because my feet get cold because. I had frostbite at one point in time, and I had to tell y'all that story uh, sometime later when I'm ready for y'all to have a really good laugh. Because when I think back on it, it was funny. But my feet is always my feet are always cold, so I always have on socks. Um, but yeah, like I I I can remember <laughs> a story. So my mom used to date this guy, and they were together. I won't even say date. Like they were, you know together and they were together for years probably eight or nine years really nice guy and I remember <laughs> I remember um I, I was getting ready to take a bath and I was probably uh, let's just say I was like nine eight or nine something like that so when I went in you know she had to run my bath water or whatever and you know before I got in the tub she's like don't come out here in like t-shirt and panties you know what I'm saying like she always bought me night gowns you know you know pajamas for kids or whatever but I always just would put on like t-shirt the little like tank top and some panties right when I was in the house and it didn't matter when it was just me, my mom, and my sister, but there was a man in the house. And, of course, I, I'm not really understand. you know, I ain't really checking for it. You know, I'm not like, ew, it's the man in the house. I'm like, I'm just put on my look, you know, my little stuff. Well, I did. I did exactly what she told me not to do. And she went off, like, I know I told you. <laughs> like thinking back to it is is funny because I couldn't really put two and two together and I'm not I don't think that she was saying not to do it because he might look at me or or maybe maybe she was. Maybe she was. Maybe it was a, it was more of um just the overall protection. I I don't think that he was a creep. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that she was saying, like, you know how you've, you've seen those movies where, like, the mom is extra um, overprotective of the actual man and, like, you know, don't really want her, her young kids around the actual man because she's thinking that he's going to want them instead of her. You know, I've seen crazy ass movies like that I don't think that's what it was either I just think you know maybe it was just her I don't know I don't really know exactly what her thoughts were but I would think that it was just her being protective of me overall so um but yeah I think back to that story and I think back to how old I was and how I just didn't you know, if I'm if I'm in, in if I'm at home and I'm comfortable, I just don't want to wear too many clothes. And then, I, you know, I kept I kept that theme. But then I start when I started to get older, I realized that I just didn't want to wear 
underwear. Like I, they were just uncomfortable for me. You know, when I say underwear, I mean panties, but even bras too. So growing up, I had like, I, I've, let me just put it like this. When I was 22, I had a breast reduction because at my, when my, at, <laughs> it's hard, it's not hard for me to talk about, but I'm tripping over my words because I don't think I've ever really like talked about this, but I when I when I went in for the breast reduction, I was a thirty eight e, e, so that's D double D triple D and then E. So, just imagine how big my breasts were at growing up, right? I, and I'm not going to go all the way off into that story and how I really just like hated having big breasts growing up. But my point is I, I didn't want to wear a bra. Like I did not want to wear a bra. And it wasn't because I had big breasts. It was just because I just didn't want to wear a bra. Like I just felt so, you know, confined or whatever. So I started noticing stuff like that. Like I just didn't want to to wear a bra and panties. Um and and it, it, and then it, when when the summer came, you know, I just I don't know. I it was just hard for me. It was not hard. I won't say it was hard. I just didn't want to have a whole bunch of damn clothes on <laughs> all the time. I just didn't. So when I moved out on my own um it, it became a thing for me it became a thing for me to just be naked and never did I think that I would want to do I would want to just be naked like outside of home at that point um I just wanted to be naked and and it, there was nothing at all that was sexual about it and I never even really thought too much into it until like the last, I don't know, maybe three or four years. Like, why do I always just want to be naked? Uh, you know, I, I know that it's comfortable for me. I know that it's comfortable for me. And I know that it's non-sexual. But why am I like that? <laughs> why am I like that? And then, um, just over the last few, like I said, over the last few years, you know, I've gotten to know a wide array of people who, um, who practice a, a bunch of different lifestyles. Um, and through them, I kind of figured it out. Like through them, I kind of figured out that. I am a nudist. I'm a nude. I just, there's just something about not having clothes on. <laughs> so, um, uh, one thing I want to say, though, about me and being a nudist is it's something that I don't ever want to try to force feed anyone, right? So, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, like, go out in just a public setting where everybody has on clothes and I don't have on any right <laughs> like I'm not gonna go to a party and strip down or I'm not gonna be with a group of friends or at an event where everybody has clothes on and I just feel like I just need to take my clothes off or I'm not you know if they're if I'm around people who I'm not familiar with I'm not going to just be naked like I'm open about talking about this but that doesn't mean that when you see me I'm just gonna be butt ass naked somewhere or I'm gonna be somewhere with my titties out like that's not not nearly what I you know what I'm saying um but I have decided to explore places and events and things where I can be naked around other people my only hesitation with that is everything is so sexual now I am not anti-sex 
I know y'all hear me say a lot, like, you got to take sex out of things. You have to remove sex out of things. I just know how to, I, I just know how to, I know how to, t- I know how to take it out. Like, I know how to say, you know, I can be naked and not horny, it, basically. You know what I'm saying? And I know that there are so many people in the world that can't take the, you know, can't pull those two apart. Like, they automatically think that if you're naked around someone, uh, you know, primarily of the op- opposite sex, that you want to have sex with them. Or that, you know, you're expected to have sex with them. Or, you know, it it's, it goes without saying. Like, if two people are in the room and they're butt naked, you're automatically, you know, figuring out that the next move is going to be them having sex. So, uh, it's, 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 it's hard to explain to some people, but it really isn't, for me, just being naked is not a sexual thing. And I can literally, literally, like, you can, you can put me in a room with anybody and with their, you know, as long as there's consent there, you know, if I'm, and everybody's comfortable with it. I don't have a problem like being naked around them, uh, around just about anybody. <laughs> and but that's because I am just comfortable with being naked. Now I know that people being naked does not make everybody else comfortable, which again is why I just it's it's not something that I would push on people. Now my closest friends. You know, I have a handful of friends who know this about me and they know that, you know, when they're at my house or, you know, if we're all together, like say, for instance, we travel somewhere together, they already know that I, when I get to the hotel room, like almost everything is coming off, period. Like I, I just, and they're, but they're just, they're used to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. They're just used to it, and I love I love them for that. You know, if somebody if we're at a, a uh, some sort of event or something where there's you know a bunch of other people there that we know, and somebody else somebody comes to the door, you know, if it's if it's somebody that's unfamiliar, uh, with the unfamiliar to the fact that I am a nudist, you know, I'm a cover up, or if it's somebody that I just don't want them to see me naked because. At times there are, you know, I, I don't, even though I, I could, would be comfortable with most people, like being naked around most people, I am not going, there's, you know, of course there's going to be certain people like that you're not going to want to just be naked around, right? Um, also, because, you know, I've had people ask me like, how does that work with dating? Like if I'm dating somebody, do I just, like, you know, we're, if we're chilling in the house and it's like, I don't know, uh, after, I don't know, like third or fourth date or whatever, and we decide to, you know, ch- Netflix and chill or something like, do I automatically just get naked? And the answer is no. Now, I'm not going to just get naked for for anybody that, you know, I'm initially dating. Because they're not gonna really understand, you know. What I'm saying? There's an impl- and there's an attraction there, right? If if there's an attraction there, and I take my clothes off, you already know that the attraction is going to heighten. Like again, there's going to be an expectation of sex, and that's not what I want. Even when it comes down to nudes, like I take so many nude pictures or semi-nude pictures primarily at this point in the game because I'm on this whole weight loss journey so I you know I take pictures of my body or whatever so that I can kind of you know compare do comparisons but I'm not the person that's just going to send people a nude that just wants a nude you know what I'm saying like (laughs) I'm not just freely I have I mean think about it guys like I went to I went to hedonism right I went to hedonism I was laid out on the beach nude beach 
Um, I walked around the facility uh, naked for the majority of the time. I took plenty of pictures, but I didn't take the pictures to give them out. And the reason, the reason for it, like I took them for my own memory. And the reason for that is because I don't want to put these pictures anywhere and people are lusting over them or, you know what I'm saying? Like people are, are aroused by them. Because that's not what they were for. Now, if I were to, you know, if I felt like I wanted to do a a sexy photo shoot for somebody or whatever, then that's different. Like, I would be, that's the mood I would be in, right? That's the whole energy I would have. Like, I'm sexy. I'm going to take these sexy pictures and, you know, let whoever it is that I want to see them, see them. But the whole hedonism thing was not the case. Like when I went to Hito, when I got back from Hito, I had so many people ask me for, you know, pictures. <laughs> and I had, there were some pictures that I took, um, you like even the one on my cover art, um, the podcast cover art, I took that one, you know, I, I did a whole photo shoot, but the, the naked picture, like the new ones, I just, they just, they're just not for everybody. They're just not for everybody. I mean, if, if you know, I've, I've showed a, a few people that have seen me naked, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like my friends and stuff that, that know how much of a nudist that I am. And even with the whole hedo thing, like I have to tell people all the time, yes, hedonism is a sex positive resort. Um, people do, you know, people go there as swingers, you know, the couples, singles, whatever, but there are people like me that really go to just be naked. Like I don't I I wish that I could explain to you all how liberating it was to just lay out on a a beach in Jamaica with some uh some 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 real good reefer like walking out in the middle of the the water just naked it was just it was just freeing for me and that was my whole point of going like it was so it it was not it was was so not sexual for me at all and I probably came off to a a couple of people like a prude you know I uh, I had people that did hit on me while I was there and I just really wasn't with it. Um, but that's my prerogative, right? Like, again, I didn't go to have sex. I I didn't go to as a swinger because I'm not a swinger. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, but I, I do plan on, um, like, first of all, I'm going back to Hito. I don't know when, but I'm going back to Hito. Uh, but I do plan to visit some other, new beaches like I understand that there's a few in in the states so um that's something else that I would like to do I I guess uh, I guess I kind of feel a little bit hesitant about it because again I know that there will be people there that are going for this you know want to be on a new beach as a creep you know what I'm saying like just for the sexual aspect of it but I just kind of, I'm going to just kind of tune that out and hope that, um, I get, you know, what, whatever it is that I, you know, that freeing feeling that I got while I was in Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? So, um, what else? Oh, um, I have so many different reactions of, of to you know people react differently when I tell them that I'm a nudist so there's there's people that's just like oh you oh you a freak or you nasty or whatever and then there's other people that's like oh you're a nudist and it kind of turns them on just knowing that I'm a nudist (laughs) and then um you have the very few people that are just like me like oh bet you like to be naked I like to be naked too shit it just kind of is what it is so like I get it I get a different reaction every time that I say this and I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to you guys' uh, commentary 
on this podcast because I, I'm pretty sure that there's there may be questions, um, unanswered questions. So I'm looking forward to that. I also would like to have a dream, uh, my dream home. So I'm, I'm not necessarily like pro home ownership, but if I were to own a home or even, you know, whatever, the next place that I live or a condo or whatever, I would like for it to be. I, I would like to be able to have a space where I can go outside and be nude. So if that means I'll have to have like a, I don't know, like a, a wooded backyard or a, what you call it, like a screened in back porch or something like that. Or, um, you know, like a balcony that's not necessarily screened in but uh like private where people can't really see that's just like one of my dreams because being outside and nude is like the best thing ever especially when the weather is good you know what I'm saying like I am I'm huge on sun on sunshine so when the sun is shining even now like I'll go and sit on my back patio and work Um, in the mornings, you know, I'll make some coffee and I'll just take my computer outside on the back and I'll just sit there and until it gets too hot and then I'll go back in the house. But, um, I, I, as a nudist, um, that's something that I would, would really love to have just a space where I can go outside frequently and be nude at the same time. Um, There are, like, nudist societies, um, you know, I've, like, again, like I said, I googled some stuff, and if I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it 100, like, like, a lot of these nudist resorts or camps that they have, like, there's nobody there that looks like me. So I'm not going to lie. I'm just not going to feel comfortable. So I probably won't do that. Like there's, I think there's like a couple of them in Georgia where you can go, um, you know, you pay however much and you can go for a week or a weekend or whatever. And it's like literally a whole nudist society. Like I think people live there and they have like cabins or whatever and I mean you just have to be new like there's family like whole families there or whatever uh you know I'm a nudist but you know what I'm saying I I'm a pass I'm a pass on that like that's just something that I don't feel like doing (laughs) just that's that's just not not me but overall it really is just a freeing experience for me you know and again it's not something I it's it's not one of the things I'm going to ever um you you'll never catch me like in a, a parade or or in some sort of uh march or uh, a protest or anything like that saying that everybody needs to be nude you're not gonna catch that from me like you're just not um it's not it's not uh, one of those things again that I have to that the world has to see of me I talk about it a lot because it's a part of me um and this is my podcast and I can pretty much talk about whatever the hell I want to But, um, it's, it's still not anything that I'm going to force on anybody. Like, I'm not going to come to your house and just get butt naked. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not trying to go grocery shopping butt naked. Like, those are the things that I'm not, I'm not trying to do naked. Now, will you catch me at the grocery store without a bra on? Probably. Probably with no hesitation like I do not care um but I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna be at a concert 
topless. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, th- those things that they don't do any, that doesn't do anything for me. It's for me, it's mainly in the comfort of my own home or around other people who know that know this side of me or in a place like at like hedonism or new beach. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't know. I I guess that's really it. I guess that's really all I have to say about it. I guess that's really all I have to say about it. So, um, but yeah, and I, I don't, I still don't have, um, a shut the fuck up award. You know what? I do. I do. I do y'all. I'm in the hotel right now and it's 1142 PM. And I'm pretty sure that there's a party in the hallway. It's Sunday night. So what I'm going to do is call down to the front desk. And I'm going to kindly ask them to tell the people on the fourth floor at 11.43 p.m. to shut the fuck up. Because if I go in here and I take my shower and I get ready to lay down in this bed, and these people are still outside. It sounds like they're like right outside my door. Um, if I can still hear them talking, it, I, I'm I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. So that is that on that. Uh, happy New Year, guys! Happy New Year! I'm so glad that you guys came back to the lit life podcast to give me a listen um if you are new to the lit life podcast i welcome you i welcome you to take a listen to i think i have like a total of 23 episodes um i welcome you to hit me up on all of my social media platforms i am at autumn the aries on twitter at autumn the aries on instagram at autumn the aries on youtube at Lit Life Podcast on Facebook, and I have a website, www.autumnthearies.com. I, I guess that's it. All right, guys, peace.